Hi, welcome to Five Wise Minutes. Uh, it's a pleasure, I believe this is actually the first time we do Five Wise Minutes from Vilnius, Lithuania. Uh, with us we have Stoyan, uh, who's been actually f uh, mentoring uh, since batch seven. You came to Riga yes, already? Yes, 2016. 2016, right? So that was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have been talking about different topics and coaching different topics, but you lately developed this uh, perform uh, methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what is perform? And why, uh, even more important, why is perform relevant to startups today? Well, perform is basically a framework, so it uh, provides a holistic picture. Uh, when you're running a startup, usually you don't have a structure. Like there's so many demands, so many opportunities to how do you spend your time, where do you go, how do you do it. So perform is basically a framework which provides toolbox, which provides strategy. So startups can actually look into their startup from a whole picture perspective on a consistent basis and they can measure how are we doing in the most important areas of a company. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's touch base on some of those elements. But the most important one, there's been a lot of talk, uh, it's almost becoming fashionable to talk about culture, about mm. purpose, about values in startups. Why is it so important? Uh, so why, why not do it when we are much uh, larger, when the company has 100 employees? Why is it so relevant to start understanding the why so early on? Yeah, I guess it became so popular after Simon Sinek, right? Start with the why, the golden circle, right? Uh, and a lot of people take this as a very soft thing, right? Oh, values, sure, bullshit, right? But the truth is, values is, is so important to be, uh, to first of all, to know what the values are, and secondly, to align on what is the purpose of the company? Why actually, what is the kind of difference we want to make on the one side? But also, what is my personal motivation mm -hmm. as a founder? Do I know what is the motivation of my teammates? And are we aligned? Are we so, going in the same direction, right? Mm -hmm. So we're aligning the personal why with the company why, mm -hmm. because they're very powerful. So you do that, and then we go probably to one of your topics that is close to your heart, why, which is the, the planning, right? The, right? We call it effective planning. So why is planning so important? Why is planning so relevant? Why has been planning important for you? So you're a speaker. Mm. Uh, so is, why is, people say, why does a speaker need to plan their life? Right. Well, I mean, who wants to plan? I mean, let's uh -huh. face it, like, uh, let's go and let's have a planning session. Yeah, like, you know, it's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not sexy, right, yeah. to plan. But basically, planning is, planning is strategy. And you need to do it all the time. And one of the reasons is, with all the demands, all the choices you have, you can't really prioritize on the things that matter most in your company. And you have to do it all the time, right? So, as we're speaking in Perform, when we're planning, we recommend startups to, first of all, on a daily basis, like startups, it's like a jungle, right? Mm -hmm. You're hustling in the jungle every single day. You don't know uh, if you're able to survive the next day, right? So you're in the jungle of the startup. But every single day, you want to go on the top of the tree, right? You want to see the whole picture. How far did we go, right? So we're talking about, it's, it's easy to be very, let's say, busy but it's very difficult to be busy for the right reason or doing the right things and also understanding where is this taking us as a company, right? Because if not, you ended up every day being busy, yes. I said, what did we achieve? But you need to be healthy and you need to be tough. So you, you are, you always, uh, I always like the, the idea that you talk always about drinking water, you talk about that, how do you develop, how do you become a hero? So how do you put together this with energy and mental toughness? Right. I think it's about building the habit and building about like when you start running a startup you're behind time from the get-go so basically you're against the odds and I people you know hashtag entrepreneur hustle post things on Instagram it's like this cool journey right but the, the thing is it's it's actually a bit hard right it is it's really hard it takes more than you expect five years ten years and you need to sustain this mental toughness this capability to deal with challenges, with stress, with... And how you do that is by, first of all, taking care of your body, right? Do I pay good attention to my energy? Do I eat well? Do I take care of my sleep? Because it's like a marathon, right? Mm -hmm. People sometimes treat their startups as, as a sprint. Like, we're sprinting all the time, right? But you have to recover as well, right? And then it comes the mental toughness, right? The mindset. 
if I want to win, if I want to maximize my probability to, to build a successful company, well, I might want to have this hero's mindset, right? Mm -hmm. What is the hero's mindset? Well, I'm a movie producer. So in heroes, we, we tell stories, we build stories. The story is about this character. This is the opening scene of, my, of our movie right now, right? We're talking here with these yeah. camera guys. So, but this is the opening scene. There's no past. We can't talk about the past. There's, it's not productive, right? What does a hero want? A hero wants to, has this big ambition, this big goal, right? And the whole movie, the whole story of the hero is going through up and downs, up and downs, just like a startup, mm -hmm. going through up and downs. And your capability to deal with the down period and the speed in which you're going to get back on track, what are the tools? How do you get back on track when investors says no at the last moment, when you're selling for six months and nobody want to buy? So one last question, Stoyan. You've been on this journey as a speaker, but also talking to a lot of the startups for the last three years. What has surprised you the most? Well, there's one thing that's very surprising, and we actually just did the two and a half days with you uh, using the perform, uh, perform framework uh, with the wise guys. And it's about the area of roles and responsibilities. And it, initially also talking about this, like, ah, they probably have it figured out. And the thing is, most of them were so happy. Oh, there is actually, you know, we don't have a clear picture of who is doing what, who is taking ownership and what really ownership means, right? Um, and I gave this example, this story, when we were organizing this event and I delegated a task to one of my people from my team. And I said, hey, can you send an email and make sure the speakers come at a specific date? He said, sure. A week later, he calls me and we talk about the process. I'm like, hey, what's up with the speakers? Oh, I did send an email. I'm like, okay, so what did they say? I don't know, nobody replied. So, so your task is to, yeah. to send an email or, or, or you're taking ownership, ownership and them. deliver, right? So, and this is something that I see over and over again with startups. First of all, defining what concretely is the role that I'm owning, that I make sure I, things are delivered on time in a good quality and am I taking ownership really? Good. So let's take ownership of helping the startups keep performing. So thank you and hope to have you back with wise guys as many times as possible. Thanks man. Thank Great you. collaborating. <laughs>